Hello, it's Mary Skinner here. Hey, Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi there, how are you? We're good. So we're just about to call the meeting to order. Your call is very timely. Okay. So we are calling our meeting to order at 5 o'clock by my watch. And do we have any amendments to the agenda? Not to the amended agenda. You got the amended agenda. I did. I did see it, yes. And also you should welcome Mike Rule. Yes, and we have a guest here. Mike Rule is here. Well, well, okay. we'll, get it, we'll get it straight. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, so our first uh, item on the agenda is Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department update action unlikely. I'm not sure what the update is. Is the update your well, research? Well, Mary, Mary asked uh, that we research the records to find out um, what the articles of incorporation were. And um, can you hear me, Mary? Yes, I do. Okay. And I, I don't know if I told you this, but we might as well just get into the minutes that uh, the there are no articles of incorporation for the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department in this office, partially because we have no town records between 1948 and 1968. Um, according to the town reports, the, uh, the fire department was incorporated in 1962 or 63 by uh, Dave Newhall and Peter Winters. So the fire department doesn't have those records and the historical society doesn't have those records and Dave Newhall doesn't have those records and the archives don't have those records according to their initial search. So we contacted the corporate division of the Secretary of State's office and they were going, they're going to research the articles of incorporation. If they find anything, they'll send us a, an email probably by the end of the week with the records. So that's, that's the update that I have. We may have to go to the IRS, too, because they have the 501c3 application, if that's what they are. Mary, can, is there any way? I, you're a little close to the phone. I couldn't hear what you said. Oh, I'm sorry. I said we may have to go to the IRS to see if they have the articles. Okay. Yeah, because we don't find anything else. Nonprofit. They would. Filing. Yeah. Um, oh, I, if, if you know, my my concern is is not so much not so much that. Um, I don't doubt that they did whatever they did back then. That isn't so much the question. They have been filing. Uh, they have been filing separate uh, tax returns. They are not in good standing with the Secretary of State's office, Corporation Division, because they haven't been doing the annual filing there. But that's that's no big deal either. But. My concern. I mean, I think it all goes to whether it should be a separate entity or not. I mean, they've been saying that this, that, and the other, but they're not in good standing in the state of Vermont. And maybe they've made assumptions and they've just never been audited. That's why I wanted to see the track record on it. Well, I, I, get, I get that, Mary, but the real, the real question for me is the question that Phil brought up, which is do we, as the municipal entity, have any authority over them. He feels very strongly that we do. I, I don't know. Well, Sarah, well, Sarah looked saying, at the statute I mean, and thinks that that statute pertains only to uh, hired professional firefighters. But right? I did contact what? VLCT, but they twice, they never got back to me, so I don't know why they're not getting back to me. I mean, I can ask the town attorney if you want a ruling from a town attorney on it. Um, but, you know, it's, it's from talking to other town clerks, no, that's that's the, it's the, they're a separate. They're entity. separate. They're separate. It's as though the Boy Scouts were using our fire department and riding our trucks. They're about as separate as that. Hmm. Even though our insurance covers them, which I think is that was the issue that I thought was interesting. Yeah. Well, I just I just feel like uh, despite everything. If the statute does apply and we can't find any of this stuff and they're not in good standing, then if we decide that we want to be in compliance with the statute, then we have to take a serious look at it. But you don't just do that off the top of your head. It seems to me you want to get the records and think about what you want to do. Well, and I would also tell you, in my experience, probably 10% of the uh, entities are not in 
in Vermont are not in compliance or not up to date with their filing with the uh, state of Vermont. They send out those little postcards, people don't pay attention to them, et cetera, et cetera. But all I'm saying to you is we can do our homework and then go back and look at the statute. Yep. No, I, and I that means VLPC, that means finding the documents, that means, you know, talking to other town clerks and then we amass the information and then we decide are, are, is does the law apply? I mean that, that's all I'm saying. No, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree, that. Mary. I mean we're 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 marching down the down the trail of doing that, but obviously it isn't a or apparently isn't a quick and uh, quick and easy thing to do. So anyway, that's that's the uh, that's the update, and we're uh, and we're working on it. Um, I must say I wasn't particularly impressed by their uh, performance when they were here. I don't think any of us were. That's a different that's a different issue. Um, so we've got, we've got, we basically got more work to do and hard decisions to make. The way I, uh, the way I look at it. Um, anybody have anything else on that? No, we just need to gather that information. Yep. Whatever we can get. And if but we, has been very helpful because she's been done all the digging. Yeah, and and. Uh, you know, if we have to, I'm I'm not adverse to having our town attorney spend a little time looking at it. I don't want to spend thousands of dollars, but uh, well, that's why I say we should get the docs and then you know give it to him because he's not getting the documents and charging us for it. Correct, correct. But I think the docs, the docs when we get them are pretty pretty uh, are going to be pretty straightforward. I think I hope probably about four pages. Anyway. Um, or less. Or less, yeah. Um, well, written maybe too. Well, they had to submit something. Right. Um, so moving on, treasurer support, two eighteen nineteen fiscal year review. I thought we had goals on that. Oh, we did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I keep jumping over those darn goals. So yeah. Well, I mean, we, we can do it. We can do it in any order you want. It just that's what. No, 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 no. We should do it. We should do it in the order of the agenda. I, I apologize. So, uh, 2019 select board goals. We had written down five or six things. Sarah, have you got those? Well, I had from the last meeting. Um, you said uh, you reviewed last year's goals, which included projects completed or mostly completed in 2018, such as discontinuing certain roads, making Rumney School an emergency shelter, and designating the MBFD fire station at Welch Park as an emergency management headquarters. Okay, those are done. Some goals, such as revising the town plan, upgrading the five-year capital plan, were still in the progress. So the town plan's kind of done. The five-year capital plan, I don't know what you guys want to do with that. Uh, Liz suggested exploring repairs on the existing town hall or researching alternative sites for a new town hall, stressing that the board should set that as a goal. Her chief concern was ADA compliance. Some steps could be taken now. Peter suggested such as installing a roof over the entrance to the elevator so it doesn't get blocked with snow and ice. The board should also address the highway department garage. Uh, Liz wondered if two, the town hall and the highway garage can be combined. And then Dorinda said the board needs to revise the personnel policy, but that was a goal that's already done. Yep. So you've already achieved some of your goals, such as town, right. plan, the town plan and uh, the personnel policy. Wow. I don't know. Well. Well, I think we also need to make a goal of the fire department, getting becoming more engaged with the fire department and how that looks. Correct. I don't know how that will look, but mm -hmm. yeah. I think we need to. Or how to state that goal. Right. But you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, Oh, I like the word engaged. I think that's a good word. That was a yeah, good one. It is. <laughs> Peter, uh, Steve, you talked about earlier making a goal to deal with Colby Road. Yay yeah, or nay for this year? Yes. Yeah. I want to make that a goal. To... Did, he, did he have a goal measure the road to where it ceases to be? I think Paul did, yes. Yes, they did. I don't have that information here, but yes, Paul did. Because I noticed that at one point I was driving by and he had a great big orange and white thing at the head of the road, right off uh, the center road. And I haven't really been paying attention to whether that's been moved or not. Um, I, there was a survey done there, uh, not by us, but there was a survey done there and that was what all, a lot of those grade stakes were. Mm -hmm. 
Well, these weren't stakes. It was like a barrel, you know, one of those orange and white barrels they use when they're doing construction. But maybe I just saw it once. I just don't re recall. I just no, no, that was nothing food. from us. Okay. Well, I mean, I didn't think it would be from us. I thought it might be from some people who want to close the road off. That's why I raised it as an issue. Oh, I see. No. No. Not there. No. Okay, so has he closed the road off after? No. It's, he can't close the road off. Well, what I mean is they measured the distance, and then at that point it's a class. Well, I don't know what it is after that. It's, it's a legal trail. Course. It's a trail, Mary. Oh, so they, he can't he can't take he can't close that off either. No. Now, at one point, you said he could he could do something about that course. Well, so here's so here's the question, and. I believe back when we were doing the ancient road stuff, we determined that there was in fact a trail that goes over and up the hill past, uh, what's her name, South, you know, we, I walked all the park down the hill, the only part we couldn't find was exactly where the bridge was that went across the, uh, went across the brook up there, but my memory I is that, I remember walking that too, I'm sorry, I remember walking that as well, Right. So the question is, he's saying there is no legal trail across the Colby farm that connects to that road, but I think there is. Um, well, it, and there then, used to be a road that went, that went from... Right, but was it thrown up or is it a trail? That's, that's the question. And I think what we determined in the research was that it was a trail. Um, but, but, but I don't... But did preserve I, it? Let's make that a goal. Because I think if you didn't preserve it by express language, it was deemed waived, wasn't it? That wasn't that. The well, I think we did the. I think we did the whole thing. That was the only road. That that was the only one that we did in the end. But again, we we need to go back and look at the stuff, and it's it's kind of a kind of a moot point right now for the time being. But okay, you know, well, ultimately, we need to know. Yes. It's so that you know, I think you're getting confused. The, the end of Colby Trail was what um, Carl was concerned about. Where that ended, where where the end of Colby Road and the trail met. He wanted to know how long that how long that was. Oh no, I understand that. But also, if you're talking about the part that you guys, as the select board, reviewed in 2014, the, yes. the, the discontinued that's discontinued. It's done, and in the plans that Carl and Jim have submitted, that is part of their property now. That's what so I we thought. threw up. We saved the road down to the bottom of the hill, but then we threw up the trail that went... No, the, we... you're, you're getting two things confused. The, the, the thing that you were looking at was, a, was an original road that Jim had through that... Through that Jim right. wanted to know if a different part of the road that connected with Colby Road was still a viable road, or was it an ancient road? And you had to throw it up, you had to make a decision whether or not to preserve it before no, July 1st. I, you're talking about something completely okay. different than what I'm talking about. I thought about. That's, that's what Mary was talking about. Well, that's I'm that's talking that's about, perfect. I'm talking about the road, what's the name of the artist on that road off? Uh, uh, Ruth Pope. Ruth Pope. Oh. Road, right. Goes past Ruth Pope and down the hill and dumps into the Colby farm. Yes, that's what I'm but talking that's about. where the trail starts. Or stops, either way you look at it. Well, don't you think that's a perfect goal then to put that on, resolving that issue? No, yes. I think it's resolved. We just have to go back and look at it, and, I'm, and probably my memory well, is. Well, we're, we're desperate for goals. I say put it on, and then we can well, research it, and then we can achieve it. Colby <laughs> Road needs to be on there as a goal anyway. I don't understand her what she wants resolved for the minutes. I just don't understand what she wants resolved. Whether or not that's a legal trail? Well, no, whether or not, I mean, I started out because I thought that, what, what's his name, um, um, Carl, is yeah. that it, Carl, yeah. came in and he wanted to block part of it because people were leaving garbage near the house. No, he wanted to, he wanted to block the road, which now is a class three road. Right, and then we said you can't block the class three, but after that, you're free to block it. That was my recollection, but I could be wrong about that, so... It, when Paul went to measure it, I thought it was so Carl could block off the parts after that. Mm, no. Well, I don't, the Colby road, road is going to be on our goals, and let's consider that what happens beyond the Class 3 road is also included in that goal. Yeah, yeah okay. I don't think it's a good goal, because it won't be a hard goal to meet, but it, we need goals. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> I, can, I can give you plenty of goals. <laughs> Which one is goal? Peter. 
<laughs> Go ahead. Well, well, for I mean, you know, just to fine tune the whole issue about renovations to the to the town hall, I think we made it need to make a decision. I mean, we're at the fork in the road. Are we gonna are we gonna put money into this building and this is gonna be our town hall for the foreseeable future, or or are we going to consider selling this property and building a new town hall over by the town garage and the school? Because if we're going to do that, there's no point in doing anything to this building. So I think we need to make that decision. That yep, and that's one, one of my concerns about, well, about moving it all the way over there is, um, and I don't know how much traffic comes here, but how much traffic comes to the town hall in the form of business to the businesses in this area, like Red Hen and stuff like that. What do you mean? Like lawyers and things like that. People who are coming here, do they, is this a place that people come with a lot of traffic that's gonna slow down business in our, like do we wanna keep this right. no. business? No, I don't think no, so. No, we don't, get, we don't is, get I don't enough. think we should say it's a choice between the village and the highway department. I think the question of the location is part, a separate issue. Well, I, I think I, it's- I'm not prepared to, even if I said yes to a town hall and my only choice is over by the highway garage, I might vote no. I'm with Liz on that. I, I, I don't think we should predetermine where it's going to be. No, Mary. <laughs> no, you, you missed my said. point. The, the point is, if we're going to put up a new building, wherever it is, it makes no sense to talk about renovating the existing building. That's my only that point. Was, yeah. I well, agree with that. It's just that you phrased it as if the choice was town hall here. I was just using that as an example. Here. I apologize. Okay. It, we won't use that as an example <laughs> again. <laughs> But yes, I think and, and that's a tough decision to make for for a lot of reasons. But uh, you know, we all know that this this building isn't. I'm paraphrasing a certain staff member of ours. Isn't the most functional uh, of buildings for our needs. Aren't there many staff members? And in some ways, <laughs> some ways it's way too large, and yet in other ways it's way too small in terms of useful space. It's way too large. I mean, for this hundred bucks a month or whatever it is we collect for renting the upstairs. We get that much. That much? <laughs> from, from Weight Watchers, you do. hundred dollars a month. Wow. wow. Yeah? It's a pretty good deal. Think, pays, think that pays oh. for the heat? I don't think so. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> so that's I think, I think the goal <laughs> is, the, the first goal is to make a determination about that and then, right. and then pursue it. That's all yeah. I'm... That's yep, all I'm I agree. Saying. In terms of renovations to the to the garage, I think the same question applies to that garage. You know, question number one is, are we better off to start over, or does it really make sense to renovate? I mean, that building wasn't supposed to have a life expectancy as long as we've been using it. They're supposed to be good no. for what, twenty years? Twenty max? years. They're a twenty-year building. Usually. And how long has it been there? Um, Forty. <laughs> as long as I've been. Here. Yeah, a long time. As long as I've been here, but yeah, yeah, it's been there forty years anyway. I can't remember it being anywhere else. Well, it was in the, the building, building right in front the of building was the old time garage. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. yeah, you know, I I have a feel, and and you know, for some sum of money, you can you can fix up anything. But so, I think uh, we need uh, to do the capital plan, that five-year capital plan. We've never really embraced that. Well, and that capital plan is with more you. for buying buying trucks and equipment than for buildings. I mean, no, I don't think so at all. I think it should be buildings too. I mean, the legislature they do it that way, kind of, you know, what's coming down the pipe. Well, Mary, we can do it any way you'd like to do it. The point is to study it and make some decisions. And if you want to make them separate goals, make them separate goals. If you want to lump them all together, lump them together. I'm just saying I think we should do that in conjunction with those two major buildings. I have a personal goal of meeting, of visiting the road crew and delivering treats to them once in a while. I never, ever stop by. And that is a personal goal that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Well, there you go. I think that's a good goal. So that, that is, is one goal. of my Steve personal and I, goals. Steve and I are committed to going over there once a month, and I think we've already missed our we've first one-month deadline, first month. so we're not doing very well on that, Steve. <laughs> 
Yeah. When are they? When, well, we when do they a, arrive? We owe them a if visit. I, if I drop something. If you off. if you want to be there when they arrive, you will be there at five forty-five. How about if I want to not be there when they <laughs> arrive, but maybe they come back for a snack or they come back at the end of the day? If they're working locally, you might find them there at noon to have lunch. I don't need to find lunch. them there. If I just want to drop something off. Well, the garage, if nobody's yeah, around, the, the garage will be locked up, so. And the bears will. Look for the big blue trucks. Right. Yeah. That's true. So we'll let you know when Steve and I have an appointment with them, and you can join us. How about that? And that won't likely be at 545 that, yeah. in the morning. No. I mean, I could come at 545 in the morning. It's just not my preference. Okay. <laughs> That's all. So what time do they usually come back during the summer hours? Probably much later than usually during the winter when it's not snowing. Right? Yes. It's I think they're four thirty. Right. Mm -hmm. And their vehicles Probably. are usually there, so usually they come yeah. back there. Anyway, that's just one of my goals. That's a good goal. <laughs> what are your millions of other things that are goals, Peter? Oh, uh, what would you like to talk about? Well, I'm just I'd like to be careful that, that we. I'd like to be very careful that we don't deplete our fund balance and we have an appropriate reserve. We're doing a pretty good job of uh, depleting that right at the moment. I want to get our uh, our computer infrastructure squared away, which is still a work in progress. Well, why don't we make that a goal? Resolve computer problems. I think that was on the goals. Wasn't that one of our goals? Sure. That was one of the 2018 goals. Uh, how about the Welch Park situation? Isn't that a goal? You want to decide whether you're not you're in, you're out? We talked about it. Yeah, let's well, do that. we're we're going to do that if you want to make it a goal. Yeah, I'm fine with that. And we want to we want to stop being the fiscal agent for Welch Park also. take you to budget season. <laughs> yeah. I think we have, I mean, if, if we tackle all of these goals and with everything else that we're doing, we'll be doing pretty well. Well. I don't, I don't think we need so, a, a longer list of goals. So are we that. going to, hopefully not, are we, are we going to jump right on to the zoning regulations once we approve the town plan? I would hope that's going to happen that's sometime next year. That, that was the goal. Mm -hmm. Right. So that should be a goal. Yeah, in 2019, you're not gonna, they're not going to do that, I don't think. Well, why not? They won't, they're going to get on to rewrite, but right. it won't come to yeah, us exactly. until 20. Exactly, that's my point. The Planning Commission is not going to have anything to submit to you in 2019. So it isn't our goal. Okay, all right. I got it. Well, you can keep it in mind for a 2020 goal then. <clears throat> well, I just think I just think being involved sooner rather than later in the zoning business is going to be important. So. Yeah. Well, how, how I about I mean, is it too late to put on adopting town plan for 2019? No, that's def that we just we talked about that a few minutes ago. That's definitely on the. Okay. Because we're right in the midst of that. But aren't we talking well, about right. the next fiscal year? Yeah, which starts in Right, I know. So weeks. that does go into 2020. Yeah. Well, it goes till March town meeting. Oh, it goes till March town. Okay. But it's in that year. Right. Yeah, so there so there's there's the old question, you know, our our town like governance goals. year sort of goes from town meeting to town I meeting know. whereas our fiscal year goes from July, July to July. So these are really goals that go until we get them done. Town meeting, if we get them done. Right. Well. Okay. Stick them in the minutes. We'll look at them. Yep. And it's look at that. Timing is good. Timing is good. Called it. Called it. <laughs> okay. Now. Now. Two minutes ahead of schedule. Good job, guys. Treasurer's report, end of 2018-19 fiscal year review. 
approval of annual treasurer's report action likely? That's just, it's a financial man, management questionnaire that the, so, the select board has to sign off on that I've answered the questions. And, and who's this for? It's just something we have to keep on file. <laughs> it's busy paperwork that's mandated, I guess. And it's just our it's accounting practices and it has to be just kept on file in case. So this, but, but I mean, this is for the Secretary of State's office, the insurance plan? Uh, uh, it came from, the, I think it's for insurance purposes. Yeah. Well, basically, you just have to have that on file so when the audit starts, the auditor likes to look The auditor has But yeah. we don't send it anywhere. We, we don't, don't send it anywhere. to the no. treasurer. We don't, it just stays in our files and the auditor looks at it. Do you have to attest to it, the winner, or just sign it? The yeah, sign. She it has to it. be. I signed it, and then you guys. We have say to we've received it. it. We're yeah. not. We're not saying it's right or wrong. Dorinda prepares it, and we receive it. Yeah. Okay. So there was there a motion we that we will receive the financial right? management questionnaire. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Answer that question. Do we have to vote on it? <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if we do or not, but we have. We well, do. it's done. It's filed. Thank you. And the only other thing is we've passed out. You don't have it in front of you, Mary. Um, but mm -hmm. I did pass out the most current um, balance sheet and P&L. And as of right now, we're... $33,453 overspent. And so how much do you think it will be by the 30th? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't just go to the 30th. Even if we receive bills in July, if they pertain to June. anything in June or prior, it gets um, accrued back to this current year. So... So if this isn't going to get better, it's only going to get worse. It's because of the road problems we had. Do you we think it's double or triple what we have through. now, Dorinda, in Pardon? order of magnitude? Pardon? Do you think it's double the shortfall we have or triple the shortfall we have in your estimation? I would say it probably could possibly come in double than that. Mm. Right. Well, because you're basically going to have you're basically going to have all the bills that come in the first part of July, which for things that happened in June are going to get added in. And we know we have a substantial highway truck repair bill coming in. Um, and then, we and have payroll again. We have another payroll coming in. Uh, let's see. I, I mean, those that's are about nine. Did you say it's about nine thousand? Ten. Ten. Yeah. Roughly. It was 9800 or something like that. But that's just for the highway department. That is just for that repair. I mean, I almost think we need some sort of um, emergency fund for, I mean, because we're going to see these roads every year. It's going to be stuff like this in terms of, so we either budget for it. Well. You know, well, in the future. Well, I think it was our equipment that the really equipment was, it wasn't issue. so I mean, much the road as it was the well, repairs. The emergency well, repairs that, was 40, what the heck was it? 43,000. So 43,000. Yeah, there you're right over. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and on that, we're not going to be able to get any money from FEMA on that road. However, Paul is submitting all the paperwork to the state because the state For has emergency. a, a right. fund in there so um, we, we still may be so able to get some money. Is that what the governor declared on Friday that we were going to get FEMA money? No. 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 That wasn't for that. No. So what did he declare on Friday? I don't know. Oh, yeah, that was for the event on the counties. 15th. Five the counties. That were declared that Okay, that wasn't that wasn't that storm that here wasn't because that it was storm? No and because it said storm, Washington County. Well, yeah, but it's the, a different storm. Yeah, but this storm here, because the previous storms, we didn't have any damage or just right. minor rivulets okay. or whatever. But this one here with the five, I think there was five towns that were involved with this. It didn't meet the 
Okay. FEMA requirement. And it was so for anyway, a they storm. had said to Paul, right. you know, submit your paperwork up through. I was the all state. excited. There was a letter that came out. Right. And I, I, saw I sent out an email saying saying good news. Paul corrected me. Pretty, pretty quick. quickly. Oh, but like, yeah. how much do you think um, it is? Like ten thousand or like what? two thousand? Like what he could get from the state? I don't know. Okay. That I don't know. They've got a pot of money, and they're going to. They've got a pot up. of money, and and they'll go okay, to the different good. towns, and you know. That was from flooding in April. I just checked. Oh, right. was it? Maybe right? we should be in touch with Kim Jessup so she can get, you know, uh, she's on top of that issue and can follow it. <clears throat> Well, I don't think it's. I don't think it's up. To, I don't think it has anything to do with her marriage. No, and and, and we're know, going to. I mean, it doesn't hurt to have somebody looking in on it. That's what I'm saying. Well, if things are standing still and not going anywhere, maybe. But if if everything is progressing, why do we need somebody else getting in into it? I'm just saying. If you guys don't agree, don't do it. Okay. All I'm saying is I don't think this is going to be an unusual year in terms of sand, in terms of repairs to roads, and that's just something that we have to be mindful of. Well, There's a we, lot of costs you know, here we, that we're not... We try to do that. This is a particularly bad year. I mean, we, we try and think about, okay, we know we're going to have a couple of disasters, whether it's the transmission in the truck or the transmission in the grader or the... Yeah, and we've done pretty well so far. This year, really, and that last road thing really took us over. So Right. Right. We also got another bill in, just so you guys are aware, on the, um, for the town plan from the person that they contracted with to okay. do it. So that's another 2500 bucks there. I thought that was the total amount that she was supposed to charge. Well, we paid eighteen hundred on March, and this is another one for. Oh no, she we came increased. Back to say we increased the budget by twenty five hundred. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think the total was something like five thousand. Yeah. yeah, that could so, be. Yeah. yeah, just so you guys are. Yeah. Aware. yeah. So yeah. that's another bill that is coming in. So. So just to be clear this accrual thing does spin both ways so if all of a sudden we get grant money that's pertaining to that storm in april that will go back into this year as well right so that would reduce I, our it should i mean if that's yeah. how well it's, it's gotta you I gotta mean, you can't it, would, you can't yeah, play it one no, way it and should. not play it the other way it. no yeah. if yeah. it's because the paperwork will be dated for whatever well, that, storm, yeah. right for whatever that storm it's right. going exactly. to apply right. to yes. right okay mm -hmm. right it's all how it's dated. What are the law here? I'm gonna step out. Okay. You guys, um, you guys have a good night. Thank, thank you. you. Who is that? That was Mike uh, Rulo. Ruel. Ruel. He just left the, the building. Uh, um. Okay. So I think that's unless you guys have other questions. Um, that's kind of where we stand. No. So I do have one question, which is in, in relation to this. We're expecting Patty is going to leave when? Yes. Um, well, she originally told me she would be here to do um, the year-end stuff, I guess. Not physical year-end, but she'd be here through the end of the year. But you heard something. So she did you, she tell you something different or no? Uh, she said that um, uh, LB had made a uh, commitment to stay in FEMA until May. Yeah, but right. the last she told me it would be, you know, by the... By the end of the year. calendar year, she was yes. originally... Yeah, end of the calendar year, year, not the fiscal yeah, not year. Right, not the fiscal year. Not year. The fiscal year. Calendar year. But so, are they moving somewhere? Uh, yeah, they're, yes. they've got, going to keep two homes. So they're, but they're going to go to Florida full time I get and come back here in the summer or something. Avoid those pesky state income taxes. Yeah. So there's a there's another goal because we better uh, Right. Well that's something we've kind of talked about. We're going to um, put something out on the municipal clerk's website. Can I've, we can we go to Patty though and see if we can't get a That's true. The, the treasurer's job to hire the bookkeeper. 
Right, but yeah. I mean, to, to go to her and get a... Well, she's just, she, she can't give me a, she hasn't been able to give me, I've asked her like three times, and she just hasn't given me a firm date yet. She, you know, and I talked to her about bringing somebody in and working with her, and she said, yes, she's in agreement with that. And she would help us do, like, all the end of the year for payroll and stuff like that, W-2s and all of that. She means the end of the calendar year, not, yeah. the, end right. the, not the end of the physical year. The, so I know I have her at least through the end of the year, and she's going to certainly be here to do taxes and stuff like that. So we should be looking now. Yeah. Well, yeah. early in the fall or late Well, summer I'd or? like to start now. We've talked about it, okay. and I actually talked to Patty again last week and just asked her if she was good with having somebody come in and work with her. The other thing she suggested that she was going to do as far as um, the tax for tax bills is she'd like to have um, Amy Whitehorn work with her because Amy's doing the listing stuff. I don't know how, you know, how that would all play out or not. Why would? Just because she's <coughs> doing all the stuff with the tax bills. Yeah. Or, you know, Amy's familiar with working in the Nemrick system with that. So yeah. she said if she worked with her on doing <coughs> the tax bills, she would know how to transfer it all over and all. Yeah, that's fine. That was just, you know, it was a thought she had. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, we're going to, can you put something out on the municipal site? If you yeah, as long as every, as long as you and Patty are like, if Patty and Patty are like, so, oh my God, I'm going to stay here till I April. I told you, I talked to her already about All right, it. Okay, so, fine. sure. And that's Patty, if, on Patty, if she's not. If she's extending it and she's not telling me, then yeah. that's on her. Because right. <coughs> I've asked. All right. <coughs> uh, we'll, we'll design that ad together or that notice. Yeah, no, okay. I just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All set? All done? Mm -hmm. Update on uh, Welch Park Association meeting action possible. Possible. Um, you want to do this, Steve or Mary? Steve and Mary and I participated in a conference call the other day. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah, I think okay. that's really right. a minute. So okay. Right. So um, basically what happened, and, and Bernie was not supposed to be part of the conference call, but he ended up being part of the conference call, which was good. He said it was all a misunderstanding that there was additional capacity in that well that we could potentially access, that there was no way... He said, I was clear before, and I don't know how it got misunderstood or misstated or whatever, but there is no water coming from that well that is ever going to be available for the town of Middlesex. Mm -hmm. so, Unless we shut down the well that we have dug. Well, and even no, then, we, there's no water, Mary. No, we, we, <laughs> we aren't going to be able to be on it anyway. We're not approved to be it on it. And if we assume for a moment it had capacity, we have to shut ours down and even to apply for capacity. I think well, that's what I thought he said. But there's no, but there's no, but there's no, but there's no capacity. So my my understanding, and if 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 I'm wrong, somebody correct me. But he said there is no water available from that well for the town of Middlesex. That's correct. And he was very he was very clear. He didn't say, you know, maybe it could be this or maybe it could be that or maybe Benderson could give up some of theirs, which they probably never would. You know, anyway. No water. Um, okay. So, again, this is one of those things where we have some homework to do. I want to go back and, and look at, at that, whatever it is, April 15th letter, which Bernie wrote, which I think is in the binder. Um, but I think we are... From my point of view, tiptoeing down the roads of the road of not being part of that water system. We would we would retain the rights to use the water in the fire pond, and we would retain the right to use the uh, leach field. We would still be a member of Welch Park, but we would not 
disband Welsh Park, not take over the responsibility for the road, none of that. Okay. But we've got some homework to do, and we've got Benderson. Well, it's Benderson pretty nice is to have us take over the road, but we're pretty, and Peter's been pretty adamant we don't want to do that. Who plows? Well, it right I just. Now? What? Who plows to like the fire department? We do. I believe we yes, do. Yes, we do. Yeah. But we don't maintain the road when it was when the upper section was repaved. So yeah, we we plow, but we don't. the The bottom line is, you know, the idea of withdrawing from Welch Park doesn't seem to make sense. I mean, why would we want to give up the rights to that fire pond, and why would we want to give up the rights to that shared uh, shared leach field for the small money it's going to cost us? It's the it's the water system which has generated the uh, the expenses. Yeah, expense, yeah. But we have until. Uh, we have until s December, December, September, September 1st to let, uh, to let Benderson know what we're going to do. And if we decide to stay in, all we have to do is pay our, our 15% or whatever the number is, 15 or 16% of the $30,000 bill to stay in if we chose to stay in. But to me, we're paying for something we can't ever get or can't ever use. That's just like flushing money down the you-know-what. And Benderson is going ahead and yeah, they're taking going care ahead of their... Doing the repairs. They've okay. already got the permit and they're charging ahead. Um, at the I same... didn't realize they'd gotten the permit. I knew they'd filed, but I didn't realize they'd gotten it. I missed that. Yeah. They've gotten it. So, you know... We've got some work to do. I'm going to try and I'm going to I'm certainly at the very least going to going to pull out that letter and look back in the books and just make sure that it all ties together from my point of view. I would encourage you to do that also, Mary, if you don't mind. Yeah, I, I, yeah. A, a, after July one, I can. Yeah. Well, there's no. I mean, it's September first is going to be upon us pretty quick, but uh, yeah. we've got some time to uh, we've got some time to do this. The, I've got to well, I've got to tell you, and good. I think Steve and Mary would agree. I mean. As much as we had a hard time getting our getting our arms around uh, Benderson, since we got Matt Oaks Oats Oats Oats, Oats. Um, I mean you couldn't ask for a no. nicer guy. I mean Good. very friendly, yeah. very helpful, very responsive. Yeah. Responsive. Yeah. 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 So. Well, I think that what surprised Peter and me and uh, is that um, and. Uh, Steve, you probably were too, but you haven't been involved in this quite as long, is that Bernie took us off the permit for the water uh, upgrade, and we d never knew that. I mean, no. <laughs> we're not permitted for any use. The state did that. And, and that was back in 92 that was done. And I don't, I mean, I wasn't, I don't think I was on the board then, but it's kind of was a surprise to find out. Well, it's been. We weren't even on a permit. I want to be careful how I say this, but, you know, considering Bernie has been theoretically working for Welch Park, which is us, it doesn't seem to me that he's taken the town interest to heart in this whole process. Oh, gosh, Peter, I don't know why you say that. That's exactly, <laughs> that's why I keep saying, well, who are you representing? Because right. Oh, no. Well, I, I, asked that, I, asked that, I asked that question at the, at the previous uh Meaning, because uh, you know it's a little hard to tell, you know yeah. whether he's whether he's got Carl's interested heart or Benderson's interested heart or whatever it is, but he certainly doesn't seem very concerned and hasn't been very concerned about the town of Middlesex. So, right. and for years and years and years, to be honest, we had nothing over there. But since we've had the fire department over there, yeah. Um, anyway. It is, it is what it is, and, and thank God, no matter what, it's not an unbelievable amount of money. But um, the other piece of this that we didn't get to, because I didn't think it was appropriate to talk about it with, with Matt on the conference call, was the business of getting the Welch Park accounting and financial business out of mm, right. the town. Um, and I will, I will follow up with, with Carl on that. I mean, that's... That's work for him that he isn't very interested in doing. So we've got to be persistent. Yeah. He's the president. Oh, he doesn't yes. want to do it at all, even though he's being offered horrendous services for well, a very reasonable amount. 
That's only to get it off the books. It's not, you know, for an ever, for an ever deal. <laughs> no, but I mean, they can, it's easy enough to find That's somebody easy, to do that. Anybody can I just, do those books. It's should, simple right. enough. You can do them on QuickBooks, like, in a right. matter of 30 seconds. Right. But, you know, the, so, the, so the hurdle to that is we're all going to have to put in some money. You know, to but, start the account. Right. I mean, we've been putting in money. <laughs> the town's been fronting all the money up until now, so we got to get away from that. Well, that's it. If that money, we, and we did fill out, but right now we're owed, uh, we've got money to us from these other towns right now. Just but that'll be accrued, out. though, right? That'll be accrued if it, right. if it should be, but it, I guess it all depends when it comes in. No, know? but if that, that should be accrued against that. It Bottom should line. be. It should yeah. be. But if they don't, if we don't get the money until say September from these people, which we should get it before that, if we will have closed we will our, have clo books, I, our books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then it would be just become a liability and not offset that. So it's all whenever you receive it. Um, right. I must have put the paper well, away. But I think there's. Have like we sent out the bills? Steps. Yes. Well, we should get it. Yeah. Yeah, I can't find it now, but I think okay. it's like... I thought that once you sent the bill out, that it, it accrued. You're saying it only accrues when the money comes in response to the bill. No. When the payment's made. No. No, we're on an accrual accounting system. So no matter when the money is received, or it, the, it goes back to when the transaction happens. So if a vendor sends us an invoice in May for something we purchased in May and we don't get it till June it goes into the May's books and and vice versa and the versa. other way when we send out when we send out an invoice in June which gets paid in July it goes back into June it creates an account receivable except if you close well, the books that's what I thought except if we so close why don't except you, why it wouldn't if we go close the books. books well we have to close the books at some point the we have a Appointment with our auditor to audit our books in August, in wow. order to have it completed we should have, in time. So, we should we should have the money by then. So if the books we have to close it, and then it just becomes a receivable, and it doesn't go back into offset the. Yeah, just offset the receivable. But anyway. Okay. Everybody was friendly and I mean, everybody wants to get this resolved. Even even Carl seemed a little more alert and engaged than uh, than usual. Um, <laughs> so anyway, Maybe he just came back from that vacation he was taking. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. But we've got we've got some we've got some homework to do on that one as well. Um, so moving right along, and we are now ahead of schedule. Approval of the June 4th, 2019 Select Board Minutes Action Likely. Is there a motion? I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We have approved our minutes. Approval of annual Washington County Sheriff Department speeding contracts. <clears throat> Action Likely. So, uh, the Sheriff's Department's rates have gone up slightly to $29.25 per hour. That does not include the $0.62 uh, for mileage or the $43.88 per hour if they go into overtime, which to my knowledge they have never have done. Right. The town voters approved spending $7,500 on speed enforcement. Since this is the only, so I did the math, and that comes down to 256 hours a year. And according to uh, the contract, they, thank you, they would like this spelled out in how many hours per week. So I average it out to five hours per week. And that includes the mileage. It did not include the mileage. Why is it higher than the federal? Why do they get more? Because oh, it's combat pay or something cop, like that. Cop car. Cop car. Because they asked for it. <laughs> 
I mean, if they would put in the five hours a week, I'd love it. Well, that's the thing. If you do five hours a week, they've never, I don't they've, know, Dorinda, how much they've, we've spent on them so far. No, but it's not the, you, you guys but they've voted. never, they've never, they never do it. They, never, they don't even come In the forward. estimates, though, we really should include the mileage because that all has to come out of that all right. line well, item. Just, I just don't know how many miles they drive. Yeah, I don't either. So, well, let's say they did. Oh, it isn't very many. It's not that. very many, no. But, they've, you know, they've never gone over five hours per week. They've never gotten that. So if you said well, here's here's the other question. This year they're at fifty percent of the budget. Right. So, so that's, I mean, that's fine. We always we always that's put fine. in this maximum. Right. So the maximum is five hours per week, whatever. Yeah. They've never done it. Okay. Yeah, but uh, let me just let me just ask a question in terms of effective speed control. Wouldn't it be better? And I'm not saying they can do this because probably they can't and probably they won't. But wouldn't it be better to say, look, what we want you to do is do 20 hours in one week each month. Do like a blitz. They probably don't have enough personal power to do that. They don't have That's what they're always well, their complaint. Is. Right, one thing I want to point out is that according to these AOT letters that we just received in the past two weeks, the town is responsible for assigning speeding on the state uh, highways that go through the town. See, I that wasn't my understanding before, that and that's not, not the Washington County Sheriff's understanding either. I don't they think ask that's for correct. Permission. I think the bottom line is that we can do it, and if we do do it and they give out tickets, then the state gets the money from the tickets because it's on a state highway. Yeah, right. And that's why that's, right. that's always been my understanding of how it goes. Yeah, that's what my understanding. But for them to say, for them to say, we are. I mean, I was blown away when I read that letter, and he said, "Well, you're responsible for seed control in Putnamville." Right. I'm thinking, no, we're not. Well, <laughs> I mean, we can do it. I understand we can do it, but to say we're responsible for it. But are we? But you're. But there, but he's still saying we have control over what. We deem the speed limit to be, even though they get the tickets. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no what, what they were saying. That. So we had a deputy call up and say, "Do you mind if I do a little bit of some patrols in Putnamville because I've been getting requests?" And I know that the board in the past has said, "No, you do this. The payment in this contract is for town roads, not for the state." And I said, "Just do it because." People are complaining, so you should do it. And so that that was a rare point. Peter's argument is, if they pull over people and they get a ticket. And they go down to the, to the ticket bureau, the proceeds, we get a little check, you know, when people pay their yeah. ticket. It doesn't go back to the town. We'll go to the state because it's on a state yeah. road. So I guess the question is, if you run this contract, you're saying we never have enough hours to, to accommodate for that. They probably would have more hours if they sat on the state roads, but no money would go back to the town. Why would they have more hours if they sat on the state road? I think because I mean, if they don't have people to, if they don't have people to fulfill a contract, they don't have people to fulfill a contract. Yeah, they all work at after hours. They have their regular, and then this is just their after hours. It is. Yeah, it's not part of their regular. Even though it's in the shift. I don't believe so. I think it's anybody who is well, working the, the, after hours. They're taxed hours. with so many things that, right. between traffic control. I know. And so when and when is the effective date of that contract? It is July first. Uh -huh. I had to call them up and remind them to send it. So they. Um, does it make so, does it make sense to have another conversation with the state police? Well, that's coming up in our in our in our other part of the correspondence. But I'm just uh, I'm we just saying maybe the state police are in a situation where they could do better. I mean, it's just to me, I, to me, it's all a joke. I mean, they never do it. They come in and say good things to us, and then they never do it <laughs> well, because they're the they're sitting out they're sitting out at construction sites with their with their lights on. Collecting the money they get for that, which seems to be the priority. Well, they probably get paid a hell of a lot more. Well, well they, I know. They get the same amount, saying. but I mean, they're Do taxed. They? They're, yeah, but they're, if they're on a government job, they have to get um, federal wages, which is higher than depends. probably what they get from the state. I, don't know, I think but um, the issue is that. But. They have to do it when the state call, when AOT says to them, we need you. We're, we're doing Waterbury right now. We need yeah. you from this hour to that hour. They have to. They just fill us in, you know, when that's that's, yeah. we're just a fill in. We're a fill in. I do see them by the whatever. school sometimes. What do you mean they have to? It, 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 they'll lose their jobs if they don't do it? I don't know. I just can't imagine. I just, I think it's a very different. I, my understanding is that just what we said, if they've got some free time, they do it. When we've, when we've complained to them in the past that they need to do more enforcement during the summer, 
when people are zipping along, um, even though school's not in session, they say, well, it's construction season. We haven't really had any officers to do it because it's construction season. Then in the winter, when, you know, when people are sl slowing down, then they do the patrols, but it's icy and, and no one's speeding. It's time for us to go to the state auction and buy an old Vermont police car, <laughs> and Liz and I will take turns, and we'll go out there and do the enforcement. There you go. I thought they, you said something like the, that the, they had told us that we were somehow responsible for the speed limit. That's what that guy said in his letter. Yeah. No, no, no. no, not no, not, speed, not, not for the no, for speed, speed enforcement. Oh, enforcement. Yes. Okay. Because yeah. I was like, why would we be in charge no, of the no, speed no, limit? No, no, no. They're, no. Saying, speed, they're no. saying it's up to you guys to... Uh, okay. if you... How do you get the speed limit changed? You have to go through... Well, that's that's, that's, that's a, a huge, thing. huge... That's where the traffic study comes in. That's, right. what, that's okay. why Albie Bourne wanted a traffic yeah. study, because you have to have the traffic study to generate the... Okay. <laughs> right. So you guys want to sign this contract by filling the numbers yes. for five hours per week, because it's not going to... Sure. Do you know it doesn't what? matter. It's up to you. It's you're, you're the board. I don't think the... St the state police don't have anybody either, from what I no, understand. They so. No, they're short. Right. <laughs> they're short people. I mean, it's time we for can, us to we establish the we can middle sex. Sam and we've got a nice building. Beg him we can to establish the middle sex it's police department. Matter. They just don't have people, I know. and they don't have. And when the and when people are when this weather gets good and people start speeding, they're in construction sites. Well, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, the average speed on the interstate these days is about 80 miles an hour. It used to be 70 miles an hour. Then it was 75 miles an hour. Now it's 80 miles an hour. And, it's bad, that's for sure. and when I'm going 80, the cars are whistling by me like I'm standing still. It's crazy. It is. So what's yeah. the point of any of this stuff? I still think it helps um, when people put out those little homemade signs. It does. Yeah. It really does. It slows you down. Like yeah. you can buy them online that just say, you know, yeah. either marking the speed limit or well, drive question, like your kids live the, here. The question is, and I can't think of the fellow's name who used to live over here. Um, you know, and was encouraging us to get those to right. get those signs that uh, say how fast you're going. I think those are effective. I those are people, definitely effective as well. I yeah. slow down, and I'm guilty of speeding. And but when I see those things, get your, I'm very wait till you get your electric car, 100 percent power at zero miles per hour. Boom. It's going to be fast. Really fast. It's the bear. It's the. It's going to make that. It's going to make that infinity seem like an old. It's a, uh, no, that's a V6 at infinity. I think it's going to be. Wait slow. till you see how that. Tesla takes off. I don't know. It's not an S. It's just a Model 3. A it's the basic bottom of the barrel Teslas, if there wow. is a barrel. A fancy a, whiskey barrel of a, Teslas. A fancy whiskey barrel. <laughs> Do you guys want to uh, vote on this contract? Yes. Is there a motion on the uh, I'll move County it. Sheriff's And I'll contract. second it. All in I favor? won't move and second something. <laughs> well, sorry, Mary. Uh, All those in favor of the of the motion to approve the contract the for the Washington to, to County Sheriff. To pay him by, for five hours a week, correct? Yeah. That's a part of the motion. Yeah. That's what Steve said. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We've approved the contract. Aye. You guys, there are two there are two pages here that need to be signed. Okay. Well, it's every year we kind of screw it up. Yeah, okay. We'll do it. This is where you're up next. Yep, so we're considering Elisa Darmstadt um, to serve as, it's actually called the Washington County Public Sector Representative for Capstone Community Action. Apparently we need to have, the town needs to... Um, public sector, Washington County Public Sector... Uh, Washington County Public Sector Representative, Representative to the Board of Directors, Capstone Community we, We've never done that before, have we, um, Liz? Well, um... No, just it just happens to be that the town that the person lives in. So we haven't had a Middlesex person. I see. So she just happens to live in Middlesex, and the town uh, has to officially nominate her. Oh. So would anyone did like to did that? She ask for it? I'll, I'll move Yes, she would like to do it. Yes, I mean, she wants asked to. Her or she asked you. No, she uh, she was approached. Um, she's a volunteer at Capstone. And she was oh, approached to see if she wanted to be on the board. Oh, nice. That's it. So Mary's made the motion. Is there a second? Second. 
Any further discussion? None. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We've. So can you write a little? Can you use it? I just need Peter. Sub, I just need the board to direct the, the select board assistant to write a letter and send okay. it, sign it on their behalf and send it. But just put that in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks. You can address it to Sue Winter, I think. Okay. AOT correspondence and CVSPB emails. Ari Culver Hill and Vermont Route 12 intersection action possible. This is Kim Moldock's letters and stuff. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pretty much. I mean, what is basically the the first email um, is the from Kristen Driscoll saying basically uh, the what's going on in Route 12 doesn't merit. Uh, all the suggestions that you said in the letter. Um, there hasn't been an accident there. V-Trans can't install a mirror. Um, and uh, sorry that this isn't the answer that you're asked to you, this isn't right. the answer you wanted. There's one little thing though that sounded, I'm trying to remember what it was, something about- um, Well, they can cut some brush and- But and they said that's not gonna to, solve the problem. No, but it- Oh, something about this. a fluorescent sign. Just uh, maybe updating oh, the sign that it's a yeah, good, a, 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 a brighter fluorescent sign, yellow intersection sign right. with Culver Hill Road. Right. Was that something they were going? What did it say? It said this. Uh, uh, when stopping. It's in the second paragraph yeah. there. Uh, I got um, it. Uh, we believe that this location is a good candidate to install a brighter fluorescent yellow intersection warning sign with a Culver Hill Road plaque underneath, and we'll be working to get this installed with a sign project going through the area this summer. So that is okay. one upside. Yeah. So I knew I knew that I knew that was going to happen because there haven't been accidents there. They're narrowly missed on a daily basis. I mean, because I think people, you know, they, it's not like they're going to. It's not so close that someone's going to rear end you. But they have to come to a pretty slam on their, brake. slam on their brakes. And yeah. so, you know. And so the second one is uh, Kim Bolduck at our request, you know, talk to the Central Vermont, oh, I forget what that is. It's like Central Vermont State Police Advisory Board, of which she is a member. And uh, the upshot seems to be that uh, anyone, including the select board or individuals in town, can meet with the state police and talk about what their concerns are. Um, you know, Kim wasn't sure where that would get us. It wouldn't be a promise, it would just maybe raise awareness or, um, you know, I don't know, create more interact, let the state police know that this is a concern. So I guess my question to the site board is, do you want me to invite the state police in to talk about speeding on Route 12 and at Culver Hill, in Putnamville and Culver Hill Road? Yes. Okay. Can't hurt. Yeah. Okay, and I'll ask Kim if she wants to come to that too. Yeah. Good. I mean, the problem is, is that, yeah, I mean, so Putnamville is far enough away from Culver Hill Road that they're sort of two separate things, but it's the same cars that are same coming through. Right. Yeah. But it's not like they've been speeding through Culver Hill Road and suddenly, I mean, through West, uh, Putnamville and then suddenly they hit Culver Hill Road. It's quite a distance from there. Right. But it is the same, it's yeah. the same population going back yeah. and forth. All right. So that's that. Thank you for doing that, Sarah. Well, it's my job. Hey, at least yeah, you, but some you do it well. Thank you. Thank you. That's very nice of you. Did you get that on tape, Sue? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking for a raise in October. <laughs> okay, next. Scheduling of a special select board meeting to accept the 2019 town plan draft. So this is just with. This may or may not happen. The the, the special meeting, the, the public hearing for the planning commission on the public on the on the town meeting town plan draft is tomorrow. Hopefully, ideally, the planning commission will be able to incorporate those suggestions that they got from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission regarding the town plan, and whatever comments come at the public hearing enough that they'll be able to have something to present to the board on the 25th of uh, June. If we had said all day election day, yet one of many. And so all we really need is a quorum, three of you to be there to say yes. That not that our day of select board? It's not. Why? No, because you're having the meeting today. So what is that date? It's next Tuesday. Which is what day? The twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. So at what time? Well that's for you to decide. So in other words, we're going to it's gonna be a day where we're gonna be here uh 
this is kind of like a BCA day as well because it's an all day election day. Mm -hmm. Do you, did you well, need help with that? I don't really need help. I just need uh, bodies. Uh, Stead Lombard is going to be here from 6.45 in the morning until about 10, he said. Uh, Marika is going to be here from noon on. Uh, after that, we're just going to run it through the tabulator. All I need are people to quickly look through the ballots to see if they make sure they haven't been spoiled. There's well, no we might as well counting. do it at the same time. What I'm thinking is you just do it at the same that's time. That's 7 p.m. Right. Yep. So, um, Liz can just, I mean, Sandy can just drop it off. Also, it'll be you and... So I'm going to say select board. Well, it's really board of civil authority, right? But we're going to have a special select board. We're going to have a board of special select So board. I guess I could be there. I'm leaving the next day to go it's to the tape. It's going to take five minutes. Yeah. I'm not going to be there because my kids are in town. Okay, so we're calling it a select board meeting at 7 p.m. Special select board yeah, meeting. I just need three people. I'll Maybe. be there. Um, I'll be there. Okay, that's all. That'll do it. Just get a quorum of three. It'll take five minutes. I'm going to, um, so would you also, for some reason. So we're going to do that at seven. At seven. Yeah. And then we can look at the ballot. Ballot. Just right. look at the ballot. Right. Literally, we'll take it ten minutes. Right. Yeah. I understand. Yep. There was, there's not a vote this week, is there, Sarah? No, the election is the vote on the Articles of Agreement and the budget is are on Tuesday, although people have been voting early. Not many, only 15, but there you go. So what, what do you need in terms of help for that on Tuesday? Well, if you appoint Dorinda, I think Dorinda has been appointed as a special uh, election official in previous BCA meetings. Can you work from 10 to noon on, on Tuesday? And I don't need anything because Doug is Doug is a JP. He'll be he's going to come in the he's morning. He's going to come in the morning, and then if Dorinda mm -hmm. helps from ten to noon, that's great. And then Marika will be here, and then Marika will be here from noon to seven, and I'll be here the entire time. And we don't count the ballots. No, don't no. forget. Yes, it's we just look it's at them to be make sure. A tabulator. We're going to do it through tabulator. You can count them if you want to. We're going to have a checklist of the tabulator and everything. But else. you don't need us here at seven o'clock on that day. Is what I'm saying. Uh, or you do. Well, that's the which that's one you just day. agreed to. That's the day you that's just agreed to. Oh, I'm that's sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've got to. these elections all scrambled up in my head. Yeah, okay. There's yeah, so we'll many. be here. It's we'll crazy. be here. Um, and I'd like to bring your attention, it's not on the agenda, but we have a... Um, so I think we're set for this, the, the special select board meeting at 7 p.m. on the 25th, right? Yeah. We're all on board with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, the we have a town a town school district meeting on Friday June twenty eighth at five thirty p.m. at Romney School, and I just need a couple of JPs who are there or BCA members in case we get to a um, a point where there are going to be some ballots that needed to be hand counted. Like for example, if people want paper ballots, what date is that again? Friday the 28th. You're going to be at the Cape? I'm going to be on the Cape. Okay. Well, the, uh, really uh, what I need are JPs. But here's the other issue that I just want to bring to your attention that just came to my attention today. So this easement vote is not as cut and dry as you would think. I'll try to make this fast. The the Callis, the Callis Select Board um, and the Callis School Board, from what I understand, drew up papers, actual easement documents. Um, after the Callis vote, the town vote on granting the similar easements that we're going to vote on on the 28th. Those documents needed to be drafted by the school board before the school board became defunct. And that is why Callis school board voted on them last night, drew them, approved them, signed them, and then handed them to the select board. So the select board has involvement in this. Um, and it, I just want you to be aware that if this doesn't, ha if that doesn't happen by June by July 1st, I'm not sure that the select board is going to receive any easement documents. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's a wasted election. <laughs> Time is of the essence. It has to happen before July 1st. And I'm also, I'm also, I don't think there's, I think if the board, the school board drafts and signs them before July 1st, they're okay. I don't think it matters when it goes to the select board, but it's something that probably we should be aware of. Do they know that? I think they must I know I just informed Chris McVeigh today. Okay. He didn't know that? Isn't he the one that... He has. He's been working with Scott Cameron, the lawyer, Scott Cameron. So I don't know. Uh, Jim Barlow is a lawyer for Callis, and he was the one who presented, who drew up all the documents. Jim I mean, Jim Barlow. 
He used to work for BLCT. He's a great guy. Mm -hmm. So what is the date? It's the 28th at what time? 5.30. That's awful. It's awful. It was the very How last... How many people do you think will be there? Zero. Probably the school board, period. Yeah. It's pretty... It's pretty... It's bad. not... It's yeah, bad. It's pretty bad. It was the absolute last minute that the board could have done it. Okay. So... I want to be in the Cape riding around in a Tesla. But they're not going to be able to. You're just like a bazillionaire. You better have it. Don't you have to have it by July 1st? Yes, but June 28th is not July 1st. Here, don't do me. Do yourself a favor and don't take your brand new car down to the Cape. We're not the taking Cape, that car down. That's the Cape I don't even think we're going to have it. Like, I'm worried about getting it by July 1st. Okay, one last so do you, scheduling matter. I know this has nothing to do with it. Do you have to physically have it to get the yes, tax credit? Yes, we have to physically have it delivered. I paid for it. Mm -hmm. Sweet. <laughs> well, how are they going to know if it's not in your possession? Because it has to be delivered. Like, there's a whole process. Oh, before uh, July 1st. Yes, there's a whole process. And to get to tax why, is she on for? fiscal? Are you are on they going to deliver year? it to you at the Cape? Why can't they? Why can't they? Why doesn't it work like the same IRS? I know. Year? Well, Jane, Jane well yeah, that's interesting. It's it is a federal tax credit. I don't know why it's July first. It's just not. It maybe is July first. Maybe for Tesla. <laughs> no, it's for no, any no, electric no. car. Isn't for any electric car. I can get any subsidy. credit for any electric Isn't car. Isn't there a state subsidy too? Um, well, now there's a subsidy for low-income people, I think, that's coming down the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> like All right, let's keep All going. Right. Let's All right. thing. All right. And this is, a bit, okay. since you're half of the Board of Civil Authority, let's get this out of the way. All right. We have two property valuation appeals. Did you see my email on that? Yeah, I did. Is there any... I didn't see that. Well, I sent it out this week. It's because... Uh, we Even though we graded Bill Reinecke's road, which we shouldn't have, he's still appealing his taxes? That's, oh, um, he is. He's saying, number one, he's saying. Um, so, I don't think that statutorily there's any big rush for this. It's more of a convenience matter for the town as well, as far as, like, setting, uh, as far as not setting out additional tax bills and things like that. So, looking at our schedule... We have July 2nd and we have July 16th. July 2nd, I think, is out of the question. It's not enough time to warn it. July 16th is a possibility, but people might be away on vacation. So August 6th is the hearing for the, the select board tentative hearing for the town plan. I do not recommend having a tentative public hearing for the town plan and then going into a PCA hearing. That would just be low. So the following is the 20th. So I think it comes down to either July 16th or August 20th, which works for you guys. No, 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 no. I know, it's summer, it's awful. July 16th or August 20th? July 16th or August 20th? July 16th is the only date that works for me. July 16th is the only date. Uh, July 16th, at what time? Well, it would be a select board meeting and then you'd have the BCA hearing. Yeah, I have it on my calendar. Um, so uh, I would suggest having two tax show. appeals. Two tax appeals will take half an hour to 45 minutes max. I mean, then we got to go out and do inspections and all that. Who, who, who are they? It's Bill Reinecke and Laura Gewessler. Mm. Reinecke doesn't like the value of his house? Or the uh, whole ball of wax? I think uh, Bill's, uh, I think the listener's approach was that they did not change the values of any houses based on what the select board did regarding their roads. And mm -hmm. uh, so Bill is appealing based on that. Um, and what was Gewessler? Um, Gewessler is just, um, I don't know, random. I can send you the letter. Just you, you did already, though? I don't know if I did or not. I, I, I don't remember, I, but I, you know no, what, I, I've been such names. a busy week, I, just I haven't looked names. at my personal Right, email. so yeah. I, I will, so when, I, when I alert the BCA, I'll send this all out. So we don't re you don't remember what um, what she's appealing just her general value. Um, I think there are a bunch of little points where she's in dispute with the listers. So I think the, mm. the question, the really, the reason I'm bringing it up here is because the select board we try to time the PCA property valuation appeals during select board meetings. You guys are the select board. 
I would rather you guys have the first say and everybody Amen. else can chime in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so 16th. 16th, okay. Yeah. Great, thank you. It's nice that the listeners got done early this year. <sighs> Even though their tax bills won't go out until later. <laughs> and that's it. Great. Oh, wait, we have two more things. Sarah, I can't find that email um, about these two appeals. I don't know what's wrong with my... Uh, Barry, it was just a scheduling. It was just, I just sent out an email to the Board of Civil Authority in general, and you were on it just saying, asking people for input on what dates work for them. Nobody got back to me, so that's why I'm bringing it up here. I didn't bring it, put in any details of the appeals. Um, not sure I should, but, you know, that seems like that's something that the, with the when the BCA meets, they're supposed to, the listeners present their argument, the, the appellants present their argument, then the BCA asks questions. So it seemed more kosher to just... Uh, mm -hmm. Work on a scheduling point of view, as opposed to sending a group email that's substantive. Gotcha. Uh, two other okay. uh, two other things from from the VLCT regarding denial of insurance claims. They came in today, and I gave them to Dorinda, and Dorinda thinks that we should kick them over to the select board. It'll, this won't take much time. So the first is the VLCT or passive is is requesting denial on um, a, approval to deny um, Eric Kemp, who came to the uh, the LCT office didn't come to us to say that his driveway was washed out on May 19th during the, that storm and um, the uh, that this was the town's fault and he said he'd, he he advised that he complained to the water about the water in the past of the town it became clear that Mr. Kemp had not brought any issues to the town since at least 2011 Paul Sermonara advised that he has been with the town since 2011. He was not aware of any issues in this area. Mr. Kemp concurred that he thinks it was prior road foreman he spoke with. Paul advised the area has never been a problem in the past. This is on Wood Road. He advised the storm caused major damage throughout the town and this was not isolated to this one area. And Paul advised that now that this incident has occurred, they will renew the area to see if changes to be made. And then the VLCT would like to deny that claim. Do you, you need select board approval? Do you want to deny that claim? So he was asking to get paid for driveway repair by right. the town or by insurance? By insurance. By he went, yeah, insurance. He went straight, he went straight against the to the insurance. Insurance. Right. series of ten, yeah, what, So well, he was saying we were liable for yeah, the damage Yeah, okay, so to no, I agree with him. I agree on that one. It's the other one I didn't agree with. Okay, so the other one is, so you want to see you agree with that denial, yeah. right? Okay, so the other one is uh, Oliver Weiss who lives on West Hill Road, there is a really bad pothole on Shady Rill Road. It's fixed now. It's fixed now. But it was there for a long it time. It was there for a long time. This, uh, I, I will speak up and say that this is not the first time this year that that same pothole's been fixed, though. I know. It has been okay. repeatedly. Where is the pothole again? Um, right the pothole the is Shady right Road. when you turn on the Shady Rill Road. It was right there on the... Oh, gosh, what did I do this? So anyway, right when it turns the pavement? Nope, right when you get off Culvert, when you get off of Vermont Route 12, where you go past the little triangle, it's right there on the oh. right hand side. It's a, it's been a nasty and pothole. Someone it's been hit deep. their car. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. Had, yeah. they had a ton of damage there, and I actually think I actually threw this one away. Um, so, I don't understand. There's potholes so, like that all over the place. Well, people can file claims, and so this is it. So, he, uh, Oliver, submitted a claim saying that he. He, um, he went over the pothole at 8 o'clock at night. He could not see the pothole. It was filled with water. He advised that he had helped someone who had a flat tire in the area two weeks prior. He advised that he had not complained to the town prior. He then stated he was not aware of the pothole prior. He spoke with Paul. Uh, he advised that the town was aware of the pothole, Paul, I assume, and based on his notes, potholes were filled with cold patch on three occasions. Paul advised that they do not keep notes on wet potholes, but advised that it is likely this pothole was patched during those times. Paul advised that once the hot mix plant opened, this opened, I guess there's a comma, this pothole was filled in as soon as they could. Road washouts were a priority, however, they did put a cone in the pothole until they could get to it. The VLCT would like to deny Oliver's claim as well. Do you approve? I do. I do too. Do you approve the denial or do you approve yeah, it? Yeah, approve the denial. I, I don't I don't particularly like it, but I'm telling you, if we open up that door, right, it's like I agree. it's like mailboxes that get knocked over by the snowplow. Yeah. Okay. 
we can't. I mean, we're doing if, that. If VLCT is talk. our insurance carrier, says we should deny it, then we should support them. Okay. And I'm not exactly sure what the VLCT process is. If we say no, we want you to pay it. I'm not sure they're going to pay it. This is the first time I've ever received this. In the past, VLCT has just outright denied it. So this is the first time I've actually received um, something from their claims. Hmm. Some that their I, bylaws, I, I believe, require consent, and they were criticized because they weren't asking for consent. Right. So now something are. must have changed because I've never had this before. But I, but I don't to know get what happens. I don't know what happens if we don't give our consent. But let's not find out. Probably they say, yeah. Well, then you can pay the claim. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate, but there are there are dips and. Right. And you know what? If I were a tourist coming to Vermont, I would be horrified by the roads. Not just our roads. I'm not even talking about the dirt roads. I'm talking about the highways. It's how about really the, awful. How about the stretch of road between Shady Rill and the town of Worcester? That's like a roller coaster ride. You better you better put a mouth guard in your mouth yeah, so you don't knock your dental work out. I just mean like you know going it, like to Barry and I mean it's just there's just potholes everywhere and you know it's just it looks <laughs> awful. I mean it even looks bad. If you don't have any money, we have bad weather. Yeah, and I know that I'm not I'm not saying that we're not go spending up, enough money, but like up. I just I can't imagine seeing this from a tourist standpoint and how awful it must it's look. Part of the country charm. <laughs> Bad. Our, I, always, I always used to say Maine had the worst roads, but now I think we have the worst roads. Peter, do we have a deductible on our policy? Not for liability, Mary. Mm, okay. I wonder, you know, could we ever ask them how many claims they get submitted per year? We get, we get a report. I'll print, it, I'll print well, it out. We. It, it's it's usually the claims come through our office. It's usually, in fact, when in this VLCT, when I had to just had to file some basic paperwork with the one with the Wood Road because the the complainant went to directly to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns offices and filed his report. But I still need it. But usually they're they're generated through this office. Yeah. People call up well, and talk about. how many claims do we have per year? Would you say? I would say five. Like five at the most. Huh. Yeah. If that we have, I can. They do send out a report as to what our um, incident rate is, so I can print that out. Be great, thanks. So I, I just have one other quick thing. We had a couple of situations in the past six months where we made promises to upgrade road signs and do different things. Is, is that all in the works? What it, is that? It, it is in the works. I, I talked to Paul and I told him I wanted that to be a priority to get that, but I want him to order the signs now. Right. And they will be done first part of July and as soon as they come in, those areas will be taken care of first, along with a few speeding signs that you can't even read. Right. That. No, we've, but got, I told we've got a bunch of signs there. Because uh, we were on, we were going to be doing this schedule where it was this road, this road, this road, you know, for all our new signs. I said, yeah. just trash that for now. Take care of the signs at those two intersections. I talked to them about that, and I said, order the signs, get them done. Great. We need to, we need to complete those. Yeah. We promised to. And do I that. also did talk to them about potholes and, and that pothole, and I realized he filled it, but I. I said, that particular one, we've got workers that drive by it every day, so right. it wouldn't have been a bad thing to just go right back down there with a the pickup with a little bit of stuff in there and stuff it in the hole for the day. So, yeah. I don't know, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's a understand. struggle. I understand it's a struggle, but yep. that, that pothole was there for a long time. It was there for a long time. And it was right when I when I made my apex clipping turn to get in there. It was right where my wheel went, so I could get maximum <laughs> speed to go up Shady Road. Well, yeah, high I, rate I, of I, speed. I, yeah, I, I worry about that a lot. I'm saying that facetiously. Okay. Meeting adjourned. I believe we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Great. Liz. Yes. When are you going to the Cape? Um. Next. Wednesday through Sunday. My yeah, husband's high school. I don't, I don't, actually have no idea. This, my husband gets together with some high school friends.